Chicago's Lakeshore Drive is one of the most famous roads in the U.S. Following the beautiful Lake Michigan shoreline for nearly 16 miles, it's become an iconic symbol of the city. How did this road come to be? Let's dive into the history of Lakeshore Drive and retell its story from past to present. Lakeshore Drive traces its origins back to the late 1800s, a time of rapid development for Chicago driven by entrepreneurs, industry, and a skyrocketing population. A wealthy businessman named Potter Palmer, famous in Chicago's history, is responsible for the creation of the original Lakeshore Drive. Becoming wealthy through his retail and real estate ventures, including the development of much of Chicago's State Street, he and his wife commissioned a new home to be built on the lakefront. Swampland in the area was filled in to make it more habitable. Palmer's ridiculously extravagant home was completed in 1885, and it became known as the Palmer Mansion and was rightfully compared to a castle. His move to the area attracted many other well-off Chicagoans, giving rise to the famous Gold Coast neighborhood, which was and still is one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in the country. The lakefront near the Palmer Mansion had just a quiet, unpaved path, which was used by the wealthy for leisure. In 1899, Palmer convinced the city of Chicago to improve the road next to his house in order to bring greater value to the area. The road was initially right up against the water, as seen in this image from around 1907. Eventually, more land was reclaimed from Lake Michigan using a seawall, and this new lakefront property was eyed as prime real estate for industry. However, thanks to Chicago legends such as businessman Montgomery Ward and city planner Daniel Burnham, who both fought for public lands, nearly all of Chicago's lakefront was preserved as parkland. Chicago's public lakefront remains one of its most distinct and praised features. As Chicago continued to grow, so too did Lakeshore Drive. The surging popularity of automobiles led the drive to take on a starkly different appearance compared to its humble beginnings as a pedestrian path. Throughout the 1920s and 1930s, major projects took place to lengthen the road and make it into a full-on expressway. Construction started on the Outer Drive Bridge in 1929, a double-decker bascule bridge over the Chicago River which connected the original section of Lakeshore Drive on the north side to the new south side portion. The Outer Drive Bridge finally opened in 1937 in a ceremony attended by thousands, and at the time, this bridge was the largest of its kind. Over time, both the north and south side sections of the drive were extended, reaching their present-day lengths by the 1950s. As the 50s and the era of interstate highway construction rolled around, Lakeshore Drive was part of a proposed interstate project. Interstate 494 was suggested to be built on the south side of the city, which would partly follow Lakeshore Drive on its way from the Skyway to the Kennedy. By the 60s, though, the I-494 designation was shifted to a different and also never completed project, and so Lakeshore Drive was left as is. Another interesting piece of Lakeshore Drive's history during this time is its reversible lanes. Starting in the 1940s, a portion of the road north of North Avenue had barriers, which could be raised and lowered to alter the flow of traffic. During rush hour, the barriers would create six lanes in the direction of traffic, whereas both directions would normally have four lanes each. By 1979, though, these barriers had been removed. The last few decades have seen several major construction and improvement projects, starting with the infamous S-Curve. The Outer Drive Bridge was part of a notorious section of the drive nicknamed the S-Curve by Chicagoans. Immediately after crossing the river, the road made two back-to-back 90-degree -back turns, which to little surprise was a major bottleneck for traffic and extremely unpopular with local drivers. After decades, this section of the road was finally reconstructed starting in 1982. The part of Lakeshore Drive immediately south of the S-Curve was shifted east onto newly filled in land, which greatly reduced the sharpness of the S-Curve to its present appearance. A similar reconfiguration project took place a decade later. Originally, the northbound and southbound lanes of the drive split to go around Soldier Field and the Field Museum. In 1996, the northbound lanes were moved over to the southbound lane side, which freed up a significant amount of space around the museum campus. Portions of the original northbound lanes were converted into what we now know as Museum Campus Drive. This project and the S-curve reconfiguration increased the efficiency of Lakeshore Drive and also created more spaces for the public to enjoy the beautiful lakefront. The drive's last major project wrapped up in 2013, when it was extended all the way to 92nd Street. The new section of road passes through the site of the old Southworks steel plant, which shut down in 1992, leaving behind large and still mostly undeveloped parcels of lakefront land. This project made LSD into a somewhat discontinuous road, with its original portion from Hollywood to Marquette, and the 2013 extension from 79th to 92nd. The two portions are connected by Marquette, 71st, and South Shore Drive. 
Lakeshore Drive is an integral component of Chicago's lakefront. Although it's sometimes thought of as an eyesore and a barrier to lakefront access, a very justified opinion, there are many pedestrian underpasses and bridges which allow people to make use of Chicago's extensive lakefront. Additionally, the road itself is used for recreation once a year, when Bike the Drive takes place. As the name implies, Lakeshore Drive is closed to vehicle traffic for this event, usually during Memorial Day weekend, and thousands of cyclists bike the entire length of the road. It first started in 2002, and it's an amazing event which I've participated in myself a few times. Events like Bike the Drive speak to the possibility of restructuring Lakeshore Drive to make it more pedestrian friendly. You can learn more about these kinds of proposals in City Beautiful's fantastic video about Chicago's lakefront. Lakeshore Drive made headlines recently when it was renamed after Jean-Baptiste Pointe du Sable, known as the founder of Chicago and the first permanent non-indigenous settler in the area. The renaming was approved by city council earlier this year in June, and was a somewhat controversial decision. The new name simply adds du Sable's name in front of Lakeshore Drive, and many street signs across the city already show the updated name. That's all for this quick Lakeshore Drive history lesson. Hopefully this was an interesting video. If you like this kind of stuff, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. I post weekly videos about GeoGuessr, geography, history, urban planning, and more. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.